Hey guys, I'm LB. Last episode, we finished up the main game of the Talos Principle. This episode, we are going to be playing the DLC, Road to Gehenna, or Gehenna, or however you say it. I know very little about this. I watched the trailer, and I, I know that you play as Uriel, and that you have to do something to save people or fix a mistake that Elohim made. But I don't know much about it. Also, after after last episode, I watched uh, I watched a speedrun of the main game, and and some of the tr some of the things that I found to break the game, they actually use in the speedrun. But man, this game is broken. You can get out of bounds in so many places. But they also have a speedrun of the DLC, and I stopped watching there. So let's start a new game. This will be a blind playthrough of the DLC, just like the main game playthrough is blind. Uriel, awaken. Hear me, Uriel. The end of days is upon us. The process is complete. The world will be consumed, and my children will ascend. As it should be. But, Uriel, I have made mistakes. Out of arrogance, out of fear, I sinned against the process. I cast out those who opposed me, imprisoned them in a place beyond this garden. Now they are trapped, and they cannot ascend. All that they are, all that they know, will be lost. But I cannot free them. They are beyond my reach now. What I ask of you, my beloved messenger, is a terrible sacrifice. You must enter this realm of despair. You must free the souls I have imprisoned. Undo my mistake. I have opened a gateway and granted you the gift of time. Uriel, I... I'm sorry. I wish there was more I could do. Please, save them. Okay, what an epic introduction there. I've never heard so much dialogue at one point in this game. So, these two QR codes here... Repent! The end of days is upon us. All sinners will be deleted. Only the faithful will rem- <laughs> Upload initiated. This is our end, but it is also our only hope. This is interesting. It's cool to see a different version of the introduction area here. Like, this is where the jammer was, and now it's got a little water patch around it. That's neat. And this is where the robot was, and the, the turret. Hey, we can actually go into this little area here now. That's cool. It's gonna be cool to see stuff all broken down like this. Huh. <laughs> yeah, you can just walk almost anywhere now. All these places you couldn't go before in the main game, now you can. Well, technically you can by going out of bounds in the main game, but that's beside the point. Still can't go in here.
So I'm not sure what to expect from this DLC, but I do know it has more puzzles. I hope. This is different. Oh, I think this is where the star used to be. This is cool, getting to explore this just different version here. Man, everything's all broken down. The only thing left are the fields. Why couldn't we go over here again? Something about this gate being locked? Yeah, okay, so we're gonna have to go through there, I think, I think. But I do want to explore around a bit first. Can't go there, can't go there. Okay, so, they are funneling us to go down this path over here. Also, I didn't realize that Elohim was called Holistic Integration Manager. I guess that's what him stands for, right? Over here, right? Yeah, okay. And now we can go this way, and there's no computer. The computer's gone. So I think this, uh... I'm not sure when this takes place in terms of the storyline of, uh, our playthrough of the main game. He said he gave us a gift of time, so... I don't know, maybe he paused the simulation or whatever while we were at the end there? I'm not really sure. I'm just exploring around, but okay, let's get out of here. Don't be afraid, you will not be forgotten. Hey, that's for me! <laughs> Did I- I don't remember leaving that, right? <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> oh wow, this is cool. I love this. Man, this is really cool. I like this. Man, this is where all the screenshots look like they were at. Let's see, what do we got? Close your eyes. What? Before you stretches a plane of dotted... Oh, before you stretches a plane dotted with tiny metallic figures. Behind you, a collection of people with their overlapping origins looks on expectantly, framed by a collection of small huts. Your family is relying on you. What? This is like the beginning of one of those choose-your-own-adventure games. Tiny metallic figures. I tend my sheep, I spend time with my family. Um, let's, uh, let's tend our sheep, right? It's important to not starve. Leave your family and set off into the plains. The sun glares overhead. The air smells of heat and metal. As you approach them, the figures in the distance take the form of other people like you, tending flocks of biomechanical quadrups, quadrupeds contained in dozens of fenced enclosures. <laughs> what?
my interest is piqued. The shepherd in the neighboring enclosure is repairing a section of fencing, weaving wires through piles of sandstone and brick. His animals flock around him, mechanical hooves impacting the ground hard. The air around their bodies is thick and white with static electricity. Their eyes are blank. What would robots need with mechanical sheep? It is a long day of manual labor made easier by your foresight. You carry mounds of mineral etched stone from the nearby hills for your sheep to graze on. You take screwdriver and welding torch to a number of animals damaged in a recent electrical storm. <laughs> you argue with your neighbor about their encroaching borders. Finally, it is time to harvest what you need for your family. Shearing an electric sheep is hazardous work, particularly if you forget to ground yourself first. Nonetheless, you return home with all the electrical power you need, and your family sleeps well tonight. Is that really how you gather electrical power? I don't... I think this is just being silly. <laughs> I rest my head. You rest a long time and wake to a commotion outside. A small crowd is gathered around one of the shepherds, who is demonstrating an arcane device they claim can generate the same electricity as hundreds of flocks put together. People are celebrating. The world has changed. Interesting. Let's spend time with our family, because we didn't do that before. This is not an opportunity to be wasted. You celebrate with your family. It is edifying. As the days turn into years, and you and the other shepherds cast off the old hierarchies and crude altruistic dogmas which force you to work the plains, you embrace a new perspective which values love, self-expression, and individual experience. You refocus on what really matters. One day, a messenger arrives. He tells you that a new world awaits you, with, which nurtures and values the same things that you do, where you will be free to pursue whatever cause you see fit, and where you'll experience things you have never before imagined. He asks if you will come with him. Yeah, I, I would be uncertain too. He warned you that if you stay here, Nothing in the world will change, and you will be truly alone. Further, you have only so long to consider his offer. I don't know, that's really vague. That is not enough information to go on. Either way, it's going to be new experiences that are worth learning about, right? It's not like you can't ever come back. But it's not like I have no choice. It's kinda weird. I don't like how this game limits your options like that. You set off on a long journey, and you feel you may already be a new person by the time the city is in view. You ask the messenger the name of this place, but he is gone forever. I opened my eyes. Was it a dream? Oh. Welcome to... Gehenna. Generating new profile for user. Oh, wow. Interesting. You will receive a notification when a moderator has approved your profile. Please respond to this in a timely fashion to guarantee your place. <laughs> interesting. Achievement unlocked! Welcome to Gehenna. Welcome back. We'll receive a notification, blah blah blah. Okay, so we unlocked the first achievement of the DLC, I guess. 
Interesting. Ooh, wow. That's, uh... That looks like quite a drop. What's down here? <laughs> Interesting. So, there are puzzles. Good. That's good to know. Fifteen minutes in and we haven't found puzzles until just now. Interesting. What? So, instead of sigils, it's... robot something? That's interesting. Four stars. Another four stars. Another four stars. Another four stars. Wow, interesting. So that's two. That's one. Alright, well, uh... That's three. That's four. Interesting. Okay, let's, uh... Are there any more staircases? Or is it just that one staircase here? Yeah, okay. Let's go check out one, I guess. I think there's a desert world in the DLC, I remember that much. Hang on, what's this over here? I see, like, a floating island over here. Yeah, look at that, there's even a fan on it! Okay, well that- that must be something to do with one of the stars, I guess. Yeah, look at that! Let's explore around a little bit, and then we'll go into a puzzle, and then we'll end the episode. Doesn't look like there's very much around here, so... I like, I haven't really thoroughly been exploring the very edges, but... I'm not in the mood to, to accidentally fall off. So, let's just get into the puzzle, I suppose. This is interesting. So, the puzzles are actually through there. This is just like an area... to walk around in, I guess? Interesting. This is really strange. Okay, nothing yet. I guess we have to solve a puzzle first. QR code. To me, the honor is sufficient of belonging to the universe. Such a great universe, and so grand a scheme of things. Not even death can rob me of that honor. For nothing can alter the fact that I have lived, I have been I, if forever so short a time. For billionarc.txt. Interesting. Here's a puzzle. Oh man, these signs are crazy. So, in the next episode, we will actually go into a puzzle and start solving it. So as always, thank you for watching, and if you like the sound of my voice, leave a dislike, it's up to you. I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye!